So, you ever wonder what happens to the other half of an ACC dart when I, um, when I use the one half to make a Stefan with pack D heads on? These are some pack D heads right here. I have a crap ton of these. And, um, basically I want, today I wanted to show you what do I do with the other half. Okay, so here's what you do. If I am working on these, what I'll do is I'll take from the other side of the pack D head, I'm sorry, the other side of the ACC head, and what I'll do is I'll put it into my gauge or so. I put it up to about the line, and I see if I have enough to trim off. Where's my goddamn knife? Oh, here we are. Now, I'm sorry, I'm just extraordinarily busy lately. Um, so here we have it. We have a little bit of success. What I do is I take the knife, I take the whole the whole blade of this knife, okay? And what I do with that, with the gauge, is I slice it. See, I can have onion skin size slices. Hold on. With this, see that? Oh yeah, that's really thin. Um, it's not like your normal Stefan dart cutter. And then what I do is I turn this all the way around and I cut it. Put it a little foot. Now look how off an ACC is. Look how off it is. How it's low here and it's high there. Does that matter at long range? You bet. Every little thing matters. And even when you pay this much attention to your ammo, it's still not 100% accurate. I mean, it's, you know, there are a lot of outside influences that mess with a nerf dart. Now, once I have this trimmed, roughed up, I put this over here. Now, okay, so let's see. It did what it normally does. It infamously decided to stop, uh, to stop recording. So let's get it infamously stop recording on me. When I have it on the other side, it stops recording. I don't know why. When I put it portrait side, it's fine. It's higher resolution, but it's yeah, in the light. Okay, so here's what you do with the cut side. You take this right here, you put a little dab of go to. Then you squeeze this very slightly. Okay. Now, how do I know right now that when I cut this down, I'm not going to hit this head or the peg? I will show you in a second. Okay. You can see how this process takes a little, little, little air bubbles out. And then you just run your finger as so, take off the excess, and I'll put it in my little box right here. Let it dry vertically. Okay. So what happens, for example, when I have one that's too short? Hmm. It, it, you're going to run into those ones that are just too short. Ones that on the first run, when you cut the one side of the head, you uh, you glued it and it made it too short. Well, let me give you an example of that. Because the dart head is the impacti is shorter than a normal. ACC, but the peg on an ACC is longer, it balances out to the point where anything past this one crest of foam right here on this gauge is too short and, and I won't be able to cut it down. Now watch this. So then I take it, I put it in there, I put it right to the foam. Look at that, it's too short. So what do I do with that? Do I just throw it away? No, because I use ACCs for punching through cardboard and um, Practicing that sort of thing. So here's what you do. Take this, take this this right here. And by the way, with these long knives, you can hit it file, 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 or the metal file, and you never have to buy another one of these. You just have to keep filing it until you completely wear it down. So here we are right here. Yeah. There you go. Just like that. So if it's too short. All you got to do, really, I think you just take another dart, put it there. Ah, if it doesn't fall on the ground. <laughs> and you got to practice um, ACC version 5 with a nice straight edge on the back of that. Nice and straight. Although I didn't, I, I didn't shave it out afterwards, but it will puff back up and this will be really nice and flat. So this gives it a very concentric surface to work with. Now watch this. When I put this in, okay, right here. Look how slightly it is over. Now, if you were to have a normal um, Stefan cutter, this would have to be negligible. You would have to deal with it, right? No. This is a precision metal die. 
made by a man who works in a machine shop of an aerospace factory. And not just a aerospace factory, the aerospace factory. In my opinion, the best. And I've seen Fan of Works, I've seen Northrop, I've seen Grumman. Okay, I've seen them. Okay, I've seen Boeing, Lockheed, Skunk Works. Probably your most skilled men. These are the guys that build the SR-71 a lot. Okay, so watch this. You use it back and forth as so, and then you trim it. Now I want you to see the gauge of the foam. <laughs> it's onion skin. That's right. I just took a little onion skin width of um, of foam and just took it right off of there. Just about any length, as long as I have a leading edge to cut off of and it doesn't dip below this die, I can cut it. It doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying? So then I take this and I put this in my blanks so they're ready to go. This is what I do with foam that uh, that's on the other side of the dart. Now, on the first on the first side, let's put these together and show you. Okay, on the first side, when I do it, you've got just a normal dart without the head. And what I do is I take the tail and I trim it with the die. So then you got a bunch of ready-made foam that has the back die trimmed. After that, I glue this one side in the manner you just saw, but with the longer dart, and I leave it upside down for about two or three days. Now, after that, I trim this away and trim this back side with it, and when you're done, you've got yourself a, a pretty bitchin' ACC Stefan because you have one where the head is trimmed, the back is trimmed precisely, the glue is cured with a very slow cure silicone glue, and they're near indestructible, but they're also as accurate as they can be. And even then, you know, there you at Staten, you have um, you know hot air and cold air, and you got wind currents and everything else because it's a place with trees. Also, you have to you have to be able to fire straight, and if you don't fire straight, uh, it's going to get stuck in the trees. So I know I'm pretty obsessed about darts and all that stuff, but this is why like one reason why my blasters don't need a scar. I make good ammo <laughs> and also uh, blasters like the bird of prey because they are so balanced and they're not mag fed they don't drag to one side even with chinese darts they will do they'll fire pretty well um and it really does show the philosophy of shooting um half of it is the blaster but the other half of it is the dart and and a lot of people try to think the dart is 10 percent or 15 percent of your shooting system no it's not it is like literally 50% of your shooting system, especially if you're shooting long range. A little bit less for close quarters, I will admit, okay? There are a lot of blasters out there in close quarters combat where you can put a scar on it and you can make up for a lot of shit. But when you're when you're a sniper, you cannot polish a turd. I'm sorry, you can't, you know? If you have to spin something really fast to get it stable, uh, and I've seen even darts that spin go way out of control because they're completely off in weight distribution or how they line up. Especially a lot of these Chinese darts, the heads don't line up perfectly. Um, you can't polish a turd. It, it just doesn't work. So at any rate, this is Chris Cartea saying, don't you go changing or I'll find you. <laughs>